Hey good people, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Do me a favor, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Now let's get into it. In today's video, we're going to briefly discuss new age spirituality. Let's start off with the definition. New age is a spiritual system of thoughts and practices composed of beliefs, values, and traditions from various schools and religions throughout the world. The New Age movement rapidly grew in the 1970s prior to the 1960s hippies movement. The goal of the New Age is to bring enlightenment, not to save your souls. There are several topics included within the movement. They include Buddhism, Hinduism, mysticism, transcendentalism, Gnosticism, paganism, pantheism, occultism, esotericism, witchcraft, meditation, yoga, psychedelics, channeling, divination, sorcery, mind science, reincarnation, astral projection, ufology, and spiritual psychology. That was a long list. That sounds like mass confusion. And we know God is not the author of confusion. That is a melting pot of beliefs. No single book or teacher holds a monopoly on new age spirituality. Christianity as has the Bible as our core set of beliefs and doctrines. To become a Christian, you must believe and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. New Age has no official rule of faith and practices. New Age is self-centered. Christianity is Christ-centered. New Agers believe that they are sovereign over themselves. Christians believe that Christ is sovereign over all. The movement sells the falsehood that we are intrinsically good. We are not good apart from God. Scripture tells us that our goodness is as filthy rags. Only God is good all the time. Two great resources on the New Age movement are Doreen Virtue and Stephen Bankars. They are both ex-New Agers and they do a great job of exposing so much of this deception behind the movement. They are both now professing Christians. Stephen Bankars has a new book. The book is The Second Coming of the New Age. The subtitle is The Hidden Dangers of Alternative Spirituality in Contemporary America and Its Churches. So many influential people buy into the notion of the New Age ideologies. Check out this clip and I'll be right back. It's been discussing the spirituality and the forces of God, but I also believe that there are two forces that are here with us that we do have our, our, our God that we can depend on, but there's also a power of darkness that we do need to be aware of. And, and that's you, where the choices begin. Do you begin. believe that, uh, that you can choose between one or the other? Most, most absolute definitely. Yes. Now, we have given that now Marianne uh, Williams says in her book, Return to Love, that we're always walking in the direction of one or the other, that all of your actions in life, either you're moving toward the darkness or you're moving toward the light. Right. She calls it fear and love. There's this wonderful book called Ishmael by Daniel Quinn, which talks it which which is anyway, it's a gorilla talking, but anyway. <laughs> uh, it talks about one of the points it brings out is one of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world that there are millions of ways to be then a human how do being you please and, god? and many ways no but many paths right. to what you call god that and her crazy. path might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light but her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her if it brings her to the same point that it brings you it doesn't matter whether she called it god along the way or not and i guess the danger that could be on that i mean it it sounds great on the onset but if you really look at both sides 
I there couldn't person. possibly be just one way. What, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? There is one way and only one way, and there that is through Jesus. Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million you of people say in the world. Isn't. There couldn't possibly be. Because you say, you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If no. you don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. But that makes you right. Do you think, do you think that if you, if you are somewhere on the planet, where are you so, if you're somewhere on the planet and you never hear the name of Jesus, you never hear the name of Jesus, but yet you live with a loving heart, you lived as Jesus would have had you to live, you lived for the same purpose that Jesus came to the planet to teach us all, but you are in some remote part of the earth and you never heard the name of Jesus, you cannot get to heaven, you think? And that is covered in the scriptures, too. The People are talked about Truly. that. God knows the heart. Does God care about your heart or does God care about if you call his son Jesus? Well, you know... Oprah, God, Jesus cannot come back until that gospel is preached in the four corners of this earth. So, you know, figure it out. Okay, okay, I can't get into a religious argument. Y'all witnessed it for yourselves, none other than yours truly, Oprah Winfrey. Super Soul Sundays has become the gospel for her followers. She has had several pastors, teachers, gurus, and authors on her show. A lot of these authors endorse the New Age Movement books. The books that I'm about to mention are a very short list in comparison to all the New Age books that there are. Those books are as follows. The Secret by Rhonda Byrne, The Power of Now and a New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success and Made a Human by Deepak Chopra, Acts and It is Given, and The Law of Attraction by Esther and Jerry Hicks. I'll put the books on the screen briefly. We must learn to be discerning. We must pray for discernment. We must learn to rake in the meat and spit out the bones. If we aren't mature enough, or if we don't have a, a solid foundation, we will fall for anything. Biblical literacy matters. Biblical literacy matters. These people are very intelligent and able to defend what they believe. As Christians, we must learn to defend our faith and stand up for what we believe in or else we'll begin to fall for anything. One of the claims that this movement makes is that you can have whatever you want, when you want it, and how you want it. Well, the devil is a sugar daddy. He will give you what you want to keep you blinded. He is perverted and masquerades as an angel of light. This generation is hyper-focused on self. This thinking coincides with the New Age movement. A model they hold is to strongly believe in yourself and not God. They will tell you that you are your own God. That leads to an inflated ego. Witches and warlocks are out doing their jobs. We need to get on our job. We follow trends and culture without asking questions or doing research. We go with the flow instead of kicking against the rocks. If culture is burning sage, we burn sage. If culture is wearing crystals, we wear crystals and use crystals. If culture is following astrology and the stars, we follow right behind them. If they're doing yoga, we do yoga. We could be inviting the demonic realm into our space without even knowing it. I believe the movement has good intentions, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Check out this piece. Until next time, be blessed. This new age. This new age is the enemy stage. Are you one to want your ears to be tickled now to later burn? Lord, I pray that you would give us a spirit to discern. If your gospel doesn't preach and teach Christ crucified, consider yourself divorced 
when he comes back for his bride. If your gospel isn't absolute, don't feed the flocks half truths. The devil makes you believe lies have color. How absurd. And you believe it because your vision is increasingly blurred. The gospel shouldn't be accommodating or compromised to fit one's earthly pleasures. It shouldn't be just a mere portion of one's story. The gospel should be taught and preached to edify the body for God's glory. What we ignorantly conjure, speak, vision, and manifest, we expect God to bless. After we've done so by purposely taking his words out of context, we don't trust what we can't trace, but we intentionally misappropriate God's grace. God wants us to seek his face and not his hands. We're so afraid to humble ourselves, which is why we yet live on sick land. When will we quit taking advantage of grace? Sooner or later, we will lose footing in this fixed race. Beware of false prophets walking many on leashes down broad rows and stylish sheep's clothes at the expense of souls. How will you clean your spill works? With filthy rags? When will you realize salvation is a free gift you never could afford if it had price tags? There just isn't enough sage, crystals, or oil blends for you or your atmosphere to be cleansed. Nothing outside of Christ's blood can atone for your sins. Will you turn and repent after all your sprinkled truths, mysticism, and philosophies are hell-bent? Reciting a sinner's prayer can't save you. Repenting with the sinner's heart is what sets you apart. You often speak of energy. Do you not know the source comes from the one who spoke saying, let there be? God is not a God of confusion, which is why you're having altering mind delusion. You should not fuse what's sacred with that which is perverted and profane. Some cults and cliques have the guile to do so in Jesus' name. You can't serve two masters. When will you come to the feet of Jesus with your personal box of alabaster? Will you remain committed to your unbelief? This behavior has opened the door for the common thief. God is not transactional. He's relational. He's not a genie in a bottle for you to assume control like a throttle. I get it. Your trauma, loss, life disappointments, and even your church hurt have caused you to humanize the creator as if he was the narrator. The choices you chose to satisfy your flesh will be the death of you. Now tell me, will you remain in full pursuit? You are not a little god, goddess, nor are you a sequel. You are an image bearer. You can never be God's equal. Listen, the fragrance of the gospel will be released. How it smells depends on if you have come to your senses. Will you remain in hiding behind metaphysical fences? I pray that you lay down your idols and carry your cross. I can't say your attractions are a sin, but your actions are. Many believe they were born a specific way, as if the Almighty makes mistakes. John has told you as a beloved friend that you must be born again. This new world order is out of kilter. I pray the veil is torn so you can see through a new filter. Elohim was resurrected, not resuscitated. After three days, the stones were rolled away. Have we become so progressed and evolved that we forgot sin is involved? And it has a volume, whether it's subtle or loud. You're in grave danger. You need a heart transplant that only the Holy Spirit can grant. All else will fail, has failed, and is failing. Will you walk off the new age stage and walk towards the true rock of ages?